Hey, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I'm going to show you how I make my version of jerk chicken, oven baked jerk chicken that is. Starting off, I have my chicken leg quarters. I'm going to cut that in half. Um, to me, you just get to get a more thorough cleaning when you cut it in half and it, you know, it's like you have more meat, right? If you have more people, you could feed more people when you cut it in half. I don't know where the narrative has come from where you should not be cleaning your chicken, but listen, clean your chicken, wash your chicken. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. You won't regret it. Uh, in my opinion, it's the best thing that you could do when it comes to, uh, eating meat. So Hey, that's my opinion. Uh, so I usually tend to remove the skin whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm eating any chicken or anything. I usually tend to take the skin off. If you would like to keep the skin on, that's up to you. There are ways to clean around it, so that's absolutely no problem. I'm showing you the thigh, uh, me cleaning the thigh. Uh, go ahead and remove all of that gunk that's in the back. Uh, that's extra unnecessary. Um, you know, unnecessary gunk. That's what I call it. Uh, so you can just go ahead and remove that. So when it comes to the leg, I usually like to remove as much veins as I can from the leg. Be careful when you're using a larger knife. You can use a smaller one. I tend to use both a larger knife and a smaller knife. It's up to you what you would like to use, but I just remove the veins. It makes it easier. And watch this technique that I do where I just go ahead and remove that skin from the chicken leg. It's very simple. Once you get in the habit of doing this, I'm telling you, it gets to be so much easier. No, it's not too much work. It may take a little extra time on, you know, prepping your food, but you won't regret it because whenever you're cooking at home, you know, look at it as, as a way to just, you know, up your cooking skills. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so as you could see, I showed you all how to clean uh, the leg and the thigh of the chicken. So I usually tend to use limes when it comes to cleaning my meat. I'm cutting the limes in half and just prepping everything. Uh, as you could see, I have my gloves on. I tend to like to use gloves when I'm cooking because it's a lot going on. And I just can't do, I can't deal with that. So here I have my sour orange. Sour orange is really good to use whenever you're cleaning your meat. As you can see here, I'm not going to remove all of the skin from the sour orange. I'm only going to remove half of it. Reason being is when you're removing the juice from the sour orange, it tends to get really mushy. It's not as firm as you would like. So it's best to only remove half of the skin so you can get a better grip when you're removing the juices. Also, be sure to have a squeezer. Um, reason being is you remove as much juice as you can from the lime, you're getting everything out of that. Um, this is me being extra using lime juice. Uh, so it's optional. If you wanna use lime juice on top of limes, it's up to you. It's not like you have to do it, but I, I like to do it because it gets in there more. So here's that lemon squeezer or lime squeezer that I was referring to where I turn the the lime upside down. I, I guess I'm saying it right. Um, and yeah, you see how I'm placing it in there? Do it just like that so you can get as much as, as much juice out um, as possible. So I'm just gonna make sure I take my lime and you see that method that I'm doing there? It, it's just, you get a better grip when it comes to basically giving that chicken a good scrub down. Um, I really, I really enjoy this part for some reason. I feel like, um, before I eat my chicken, I'm, I'm giving it a good bath as crazy as that sounds. So here you're going to see what I was referring to, um, uh, well, regarding the sour orange. So I'm going to hold it this way because I want to collect the seeds. I don't want to miss any seeds going into the bowl. So the best way to remove the juices from the sour orange is to uh, grip one side and then collect it with your, uh, your other hand. And that way you won't have to worry about any seeds going into your, kid, uh, into your chicken. So I'm just showing you this technique. Tell me if you, you know, 
how this works out for you. If my instructions were clear enough, if you like the outcome of it, you know, don't be afraid to comment with me. I mean, well, comment in the section, in the comment section. My words all jumbled up. <laughs> but um, okay, so after that, you're gonna get rid of all the um, all of the limes. You don't need it sitting in your chicken. So this is me showing you how I'm basically giving it a good bath. Okay, you want to make sure that the chicken is being, um, you know, well, I guess. Now I don't want to say marinated because there's no seasoning, but you just want the chicken to soak up all the lime juice. You see how I had put some slits in the chicken? I meant to say earlier, it's so that everything can be soaked up. So your seasoning is going to be soaked up. It's going to be well marinated, the lime juice, all of that. It's so good. Uh, the salt, I added about, I want to say about a tablespoon of salt. Don't worry about this part. You you might be like, oh my gosh, it'll come out salty. No, it's not going to come out salty because you, you later on you're going to see how I rinse it off. So don't even worry about that. It's just so that your chicken has flavor to it. This is a technique that Haitians tend to do, or I believe Caribbean people in general uh, do. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, it's going to be too much salt. No, it's not because you're going to be washing off. The purpose of this is so that your chicken can be well seasoned. You ever go out to a restaurant or someone cooks and you're like, dang, I see the seasoning, but I ain't really tasting it, tasting it. Or it's just on the surface, if that makes sense. But when you bite into it, it ain't really hitting. Yeah, that's why. They didn't have it soaking in salt and lime. So this part that I've included, okay, so this is with cold water that I washed off you know all the extra uh, lime juice and the salt that screen recording that you see that's an additional step that you would like if you would like to do you can do i will have a link in the description box of a detailed video of how i clean my chicken from beginning to end and use um cold water and then hot water and then seasoning it so just click on that if you want to do that extra step i didn't do that in this video but you see, I rinsed it off. This was after it soaked for some hours or it can soak overnight. This is my seasoning that I have. Every seasoning that I've used in this video is going to be in the description box from thyme to uh, ground thyme to black pepper to cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, um, soy sauce, brown sugar, onion powder, you, you name it. It's in there. Just go ahead and read the description box and all the uh, seasonings will be listed. So this is me making my APs, basically blending all of my seasonings and making kind of like a, you know, a paste. Um, that's uh, another term. Um, this, listen, this is a joke. <laughs> if you watch my previous videos, I talk about not wasting anything. I don't waste anything. I want all that seasoning to be in there. And um, something that I also do is after I remove all the seasoning from the blender, I put like a little bit of water in it, shake it up to make sure that no seasoning is left behind. Okay, so call it what you want, but I'm not wasting anything. Um, so I just make sure to coat it very well, make sure it sits and marinates. Um, it's like a two-step process. In a sense, it'll sit in lime juice and the salt that you've seen earlier. You can let that sit for about, I want to say an hour. And then you can let this, after you rinse everything off, you can let the seasoning, um, the chicken basically be marinated in the seasoning for about six or seven hours. Or if you want to leave it overnight, you can also do that. Um, me, I was, you know, trying to eat a little bit sooner. So I just let it sit for a few hours and marinate, but it's up to you how long you want it to, um, to sit in the, uh, in the seasoning. It's up to you. You just want to make sure everything tastes really good. So this is me just making sure everything is well coated, um, with my gloves. Like I mentioned before, I, I have to wear gloves. <laughs> like I can't, I can't cook without. Um, gloves depending on what I'm cooking so after I've done all of that I just take my thighs and my legs and I place them I go ahead and I place them in this um, right in here and I'm gonna you know refrigerate it and let it
Now, like I told you, I don't waste anything. So for the remaining of uh, the seasoning that you see, I went ahead and made sure to place it on top so that everything could be soaked up, okay? And this is even from the blender. This is the remaining uh, season that I had. I just made sure, you know what? I don't want to waste that. So I just made sure to add it in there. And like I said, it's up to you and your schedule and how long you could see that, you know, you can have your chicken um, marinating, whether it's for six hours, 12 hours or longer that you let it marinate, the more that the taste will, you know, you could actually taste the seasoning. So this is me adding additional seasoning to the chicken. This is jerk seasoning. Like I said, everything will be in the description box for measurements and everything. Be sure to check that out. Um, this seasoning is not salty at all. It's really good. It has like a real good, uh, kick to it. So it's really, really good. I'm telling you this, this recipe is bomb. You have to try it. And if you do, let me know how you like it. Be sure to, to do that. Drop a comment. So I cover it up, refrigerate it. I let it sit for a few hours. And this is afterwards that it's been marinating. I used a baking rack um, to place the chicken thighs and legs on. And I made sure to bake everything at 350 degrees. Um, this is the additional um, seasoning I had. I just made sure it was on the bottom of the pan because um, I would take the excess and make sure I just, you know, just so my chicken wouldn't be dry, I just made sure to coat the extra juices and everything. Um, these are the extra juices I was talking about. I just made sure to, you know, make sure it was added on to the meat as well. And yeah, that's the end of that. That's the end of this video. And this is the outcome. It came out so good. I rate it a 10 out of 10, of course. And you can serve this with some rice and peas. I'm going to make sure to uh, go ahead and upload that video of how I made my rice and peas this week. Be sure to check that out. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. And if you tried this recipe, all right, till next time. And then I come check in my bed, two times a week And my dog is on probation, another five years And then girl to his little kids, two times a week She like the bar with the big old chains right around